Yo, Issa. High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, Pico, Maninko, only for your shield, you make me link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, walk a cup with team, I win the championship this season. Yo, Issa. All right, and what can be dubbed as a true symbol of all-island schoolboy football supremacy in Jamaica? Manning Cup champions Mona and Da Costa Cup winners Clarendon College will do battle on Wednesday for the oldest schoolboy trophy in the country, the Olivia Shield. The match will take place at the National Stadium and will be live on Sportsmax Plus, Sportsmax 2 and Seen TV starting with a pre-game show at 4.30 p.m. local time, 5.30 ECT. Both schools will be in high spirits heading into the contest, with Mona securing their first ever schoolboy football trophy by beating Heidel 1-0 in the Manning Cup final last Friday, while Clarendon College emphatically put away Glenmer High 6-2 in the DaCosta Cup final on Saturday. This will be the second time the teams are meeting in two seasons. Clarendon College won 3-1 when they met in the Champions Cup quarterfinals last year. So let's quickly preview this one with Dwight Jeremiah, head coach of the Costa Cup last 16 qualifiers, William Nib, and our very own Sportsmax analyst. Good afternoon, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, Maya. Good. Very good. Just getting off the work. <laughs> yeah, of course, really a pleasure to chat with you, Dwight, on the Sportsmax Zone. We have a mouth-watering matchup. And for me, as I said in the opening, it's the best of the best clashing against each other. For me, I'm a bit nervous for this one. So I'm going to take... Nervous because... <laughs> yes. Because you're supporting Mona? <laughs> uh, we're going to leave it up to you with the expert <laughs> advice, Dwight. How this one gonna go? Um, it's two teams of two different styles. So I, I I think I think each style won't really adversely make the other team very uncomfortable. Mona can play a lot without the ball. They don't mind not having the ball. Uh, Clarendon College, they would like to have it, and I suspect they will have the bulk of it. Mona is okay with uh, parking the bus as their head coach or their technical director says he's quite willing to do. He's more pragmatic. Um, I think Lenny Hyde is more a philosophical coach that he he likes a particular style. Um, but Butler will do what is necessary to win a game. Whether or not it will be enough against this Clarendon team is another matter. I certainly think it may not be because if they turn up as they did, in that finals, when they want to play, I honestly believe there's not a schoolboy football team that can live with them. However, we know this is football and no two games are ever the same. And tactically, yes, Butler will try and set up to really frustrate and, and, and play on the counter. So, yeah, it could be, it could yet still be for Butler. But for me, I think it's Clarendon's. All right, Dwight, are we to expect a lot of goals in this match? Or do we expect the teams, you know, to be a bit more cautious? I think not teams, but team. I think Mona will be cautious for this one. Um, I don't think they'll play as open as Glenn Muir did. Uh, when Pierre said he went with two strikers, I think that might have been a misjudgment to think that uh, he could counter it with two up front, needed more numbers behind the ball, because I think in the wide areas, I, I did say it on the show before that uh, Clarendon will exploit that. They'll look to do the same against Mona. I think it will be difficult. Mona will sit in low blocks and, and try and frustrate them. But I think uh, no matter how well organized the defense is, if you do have uh, passing and movement, one touch football, they can be unlocked. And there's a lot of match winners in this client and team. Mind you though, Mona can hurt you on the counter. They do well on the counter. Uh, two, three, four passes, the max, and they're into your final third looking to threaten goals. So Clarendon will be mindful of that. Uh, but I think, I think Clarendon will go for it from the goal. From the opening whistle, Mona, I think, will be the one that will apply the little caginess about this encounter. Yeah, Dwight, your thoughts on the turnaround time for the Olivia Shield Manny Cup final on Friday, the Costa Cup final on Saturday, Olivia Shield playoff on Wednesday? Always, you, you require at least 72 hours maximum, uh, or minimum rather, for your recovery. 
um, when you check the, the time span, I, I think they will bother just on that. But I think both do, these two teams understand the signs of the recovery and rest and will do all they can to get their balls ready with rest, elevation, flushing and all of that to get the fatigue out. Um, it wasn't a, a, a bad on the footing in terms of the playing. Yes, Clarendon did exert, but in moments in the game, they, 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 they toned down a bit. And then as Glenn Muir threatened, they tend to change gear as, as at will. Um, I don't think it would be a major factor for these two teams. Maybe a little bit on the intensity with which Clarendon will want to play uh, with this short turnaround. Uh, but Mona, in their style, being a bit more reserved will not look to expound a lot of energy in this contest early on. So if anybody it would affect his, 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 his client, then, but when you have the ball, uh, you dictate the pace of the game. So yeah, I think it will be minimal, this 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 factor. Of, of it, it, interesting that you say that, Dwight, especially suggesting that maybe Clarendon College is the one that would be more affected by it, because I asked that question against um, the background or thinking about the fact that this is the first time Mona would have won the Manning Cup. I don't think they held back on the celebrations. And at least, um, if not physical, and maybe it can be physical, but from a psychological standpoint, it can be difficult to come off um, such a significant high and then get yourself back into focus mode for another major assignment just um, 48 to 72 hours after. Well, well, the more I think about it too, Ricardo, and what you said there could be a factor, but then I think about it a little bit more. And Mona, in terms of their squad depth, uh, yes, they have the players on the bench, but I think really and truly has relied on a core, probably 13 or uh, thereabout players going through the season. So in that regards, if it if it requires the bench, I think Klein and College will have the fresher players or the players that are more uh, equipped to affect the game than a Mona. And these are the boys that have been doing it all season when you look at Mona. So, yeah, I think that 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 would be a factor. And, and Clarendon College, they do get back Bolt. Thompson did a really good job, but Bolt is uh, returning from his red card for this one. Uh, so, yeah, they do have more quality, I think, in depth. So, if anything, as I said, Clarendon would be the one that because they're pushing the game. But then again, you look at their squad depth. And that's why I think it probably will be a non-factor overall. I think Butler is quite good as, at, at getting into the, the head of these boys. Um, whether or not, though, they will feel like, you know, we've won the Manning Cup, we've done the great things, so the Olivia Shield is a bonus. Well, that will see how they approach this one. But on social media, I hear the kind of fans just begging the boys to be up for this one. They want this one. They really want to, to prove that they're better than everybody else. Yeah, and just one quick one on this Clarendon College team, and maybe it is just me, but uh, before Clarendon College went down by two goals to one against Glenmuir in the Champions Cup final, I felt that this was a team playing within themselves. Now, after they went down by two goals to one against Glenmuir, I saw a different Clarendon College which transitioned into the Da Costa Cup final, and part of that um, is their big three, Christopher Hall, Malachi Douglas and Kahim Dixon, seemingly playing closer together. If that happens again, come tomorrow, will Mona have a genuine chance against this CC team? I tell you, that, that is their plus, Clarendon College, with those big three. I mean, you had Ashley to it, and you could get a four, a big four, because he did turn up for the final as well. I think their underbelly, their soft underbelly was through the middle. They were quite good with the ball, but without it, they weren't. That was against Glenmuir, and Glenmuir number 10, Gordon, and White had a field day through there. I think they corrected that for the for the finals of the Da Costa Cup. They were very good without the ball. They pressed, they worked hard. Um, so that, I think, nullify uh, the chance of exploiting them. They're very good creating overloads in wide areas. And that's when those three boys get close together and, and really create those triangles and diamond if Ashley gets involved in it. So yeah, if they are firing like that and, and come out with the middle operating as they do without the football, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a long day for Mona. Um, I keep saying that uh, they're in the game, it's going to be played, so they do have their chance and tactically they will set up to make it difficult. But, I mean, you'd be a brave, brave betting man to go against Canon College after what you saw um, with them on, on Saturday. 
Well, it will be for sure some really exciting football. Dwight, I cannot wait for tomorrow. I want to thank you so much for your time. And we'll talk again soon after whichever team walks away with the Olivia Shield. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully they make it a good game because I'll be on call. <laughs> thank you so much, Dwight Jeremiah. There. Right. He is our very own Sports Max analyst. We're taking a quick break. We still have football to talk.